China shocked the world with a major devaluation of its currency in a move that's going to have effect on both investors and politicians. We're the Hood on the Street team in Hong Kong, and with me is Aaron Back. Aaron, are you as surprised with the move as everyone else is? Uh, I'm quite surprised, yes, but in retrospect, it does have a certain amount of logic. Uh, the Chinese economy has been weak and getting weaker. They need to loosen policy, but they're in a bind because when they cut interest rates, that creates outflow pressures, especially when the Federal Reserve is expected to soon start raising rates. And so uh, this is, in a sense, their solution to that. And we have to note here that you know, for a while, China has evaded this sort of what, what economists call the trilemma in monetary policy by having a closed capital account. But that's not true anymore, right? Correct. I mean, the Chinese capital account is sort of semi-open. It's open enough that we've seen actually hundreds of billions of dollars of capital outflows in the first half of this year. And so um, you know, that, that's why they're doing this now. They can't keep the currency stable and cut interest rates at the same time because it just sends too much money out. So even, this, even though this is supposed to show some kind of deep malaise in the economy, investors so far seem to be reacting pretty well, at least in the stock market. A lot of stocks are up. What do you make of that? I mean, I think stock market uh, investors view this as a form of easing. And uh, in a sense, that's true. And they you know, perceive that this will pave the way for further interest rate cuts as well. Yeah, yeah if I'm holding you know, uh, stock in an exporting company, obviously I'm better off now because exports are really going to go through the roof. Yeah, a Chinese exporter, sure. But if you own stock in anyone who sells something to China, like a raw material producer, uh, then this is quite negative for you. So I do think that uh, you know, the market is going to have to sort of uh, settle out the winners and losers here. And that's only just started. The other question here is politics, and you know, for for a while, it's, it's U.S. election season, and politicians in the U.S. for the last many years have been beating the drum about China as a current currency manipulator. This is obviously going to change the debate and the tone in the U.S. now. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I think in a sense, China's timing is good here because you actually hear a lot less about China being a currency manipulator than you did, say, in 2008, uh, and that's partially because the renminbi, uh, you know, over those years has appreciated quite a lot. Now, you know, we have a presidential race coming up. Wouldn't be surprised if we hear Donald Trump talk about this. <laughs> but it's not as big a deal as it was several years ago. All right, maybe another campaign talking point for Donald Trump, but certainly an issue for investors to grapple with.